when we talk about the Clemson Tigers of 2019, you're talking about a team that came off of a dominant national championship run, probably one of the more dominant national championship runs maybe in all of college football history during the 2018 season. This team went a perfect 15-0. and Hasn't been done in, I think, what, close to 80, 90 years. Um, you know, you have a generational prospect in Trevor Lawrence, who a lot of people are saying that, hey, this is the next Peyton Manning, who, who certainly proved that he can live up to that billing. Um, the death and the just just the, the coaching, I, the team was close to perfect. You had the best defensive line probably in college football history with, you know, with three um, first round picks um, off that defensive line. Another one, I think, went in the third or fourth round. Um, and Austin Bryant, but man, I mean, this team was absolutely loaded in 2018. So coming into 2019, you know, you're they're playing in the ACC, which is the weakest Power Five conference. It's but Clemson's by far at this point the most dominant program there. Florida State's in the decline. Miami is in the decline. Um, so really, there's really nobody in that conference that can stop them, right? Every college football major, you know, site out there. ESPN, Pro Football Focus, um, 24-7 sports, just, you know, Athlon sports. You know, these guys kept predicting that, hey, Clemson's not only going to win their conference, they're not only going to make the playoffs, they're going to make it to the national championship game. For the, for the most part, it was Clemson versus Alabama in the national championship because we all knew what Clemson had returning. We all knew what conference they had and what schedule that they had, and everybody knew that this team was going to make it. And... They did make it. They made it back to the national championship dance, but it wasn't an easy road. You're talking about a Clemson team that struggled early. Trevor Lawrence was not Trevor Lawrence of 2018. He struggled. You know, he we found out the dude is human. Um, he made a lot of miss. He made a lot of missed throws. Um, we saw a lot of frustration coming out of Trevor Lawrence. He made a lot of bad plays throwing the football. Um, at one point, I think he had like what five touchdowns, five interceptions. Um, he, I mean, he just kept turning over the ball, just kept making just really, really bad decisions. And everybody kind of rode off the Clemson bandwagon. They got on the Bama bandwagon. They got on the LSU bandwagon. They got on the uh, the Ohio State bandwagon. People just rode off Clemson because how they performed. And not just that, you also had the North Carolina blend, uh, blunder. They almost blew that game and potentially could have cost Clemson the entire the entire season for themselves. This is a team that was going against North Carolina that should have lost that game. They miraculously won because, again, their defense stepped up when it needed to be during that two-point conversion. But Clemson was that close for missing the college football playoffs. But ever since that North Carolina win, they dominated, and they show that they belong. But the college football playoff committee, you can tell they had them at fourth the entire time. They did. They backed them up to fourth, and they— you know, uh, fourth, third, they, they, they just kept them there, right? So then Dabo Sweeney, he goes on with the disrespect. Hey, the college ball playoff committee, they don't want us here. Um, they disrespected us. Uh, we Again, we're national champions, but according to these guys, we don't, we don't even, you know, we don't belong here. Um, so you heard pretty much the whining and the complaining about it, um, but rightfully so. I mean, these guys are the defending national champions. They're undefeated again throughout the regular season, but they're – kept there at third and fourth while Ohio State LSU while well, at, at one point Bama was over them um, Georgia was over them at one point so I you I understood it but you know if you're one of the four best teams you're gonna be in there you know right it doesn't matter if you're in fourth third second or first if you're in you're in doesn't matter who you play against but I again I understood what these guys come from but you know again Clemson they found their rhythm Trevor Lawrence found his rhythm. The defense was balling all day. Um, Justin Ross wasn't that same dominant receiver, but he was a really good receiver. T. Higgins was making plays. Travis Etienne, once again, breaking records. I think he broke the all-time rushing record there at Clemson. Um, and then, of course, they do again, they just, they just absolutely demolished their conference. They destroyed uh, Virginia in the ACC championship game, and they went on to the college ball playoffs. And they went up against an Ohio State team. That, again, a lot of people wrote off Clemson. People thought that Ohio State was easily going to win that game. People thought that Ohio State with Justin Fields and uh, Chase Young and right uh, uh, a lot, Chris Olave and J.K. Dobbins and the offensive line and, and the death of, that they have, uh, Ryan Day, what he was the, just the incredible job he's been able to do with Ohio State and that they're more battle-tested than Clemson. 
And for the majority of that game, Ohio State looked like they were the better team, right? This was a team that was up 16 to nothing. And Clemson looked like they just didn't belong there, that the the schedule of playing these weak opponents finally caught up with them. But the team showed championship pedigree. They showed championship pedigree. They showed championship fight, heart. And they came back and won that game. And even though Ohio State fans have a lot to say about that as far as the refer as far as the officiating goes with one of their players being ejected and missed calls here and there um there was right the, right the fumble recovery for a touchdown which was which was called an incomplete pass um but Clemson came back down 16 to nothing they showed that championship pedigree they came back and won the game and they showed that they absolutely deserved to be right back at least near the mountaintop so they gone on they, won a, they beat Ohio State, which people were calling, hey, this could be the best college football team of all time. And they went up and won that game. So now you guys have gone against LSU. And LSU with their, with their offense, the, the greatest offense we have ever seen as far as production. It is, it's no question. Joe Burrow wins the Heisman Trophy. Jamar Chase wins the Belitnikoff Award. Grant Delpit wins the Jim Thorpe Award. Ed Orgeron with his accent. You got the entire state of Louisiana. Literally, as you guys are playing against LSU in the Super Bowl, the entire in the Superdome, the entire state of Louisiana is behind them. It's kind of like a road game, as Davos Sweeney called it. It's a road game. Not a lot, of, but you know, there's there's really not a lot of Clemson supporters. Not because they didn't want to show up. It's just because you're in Louisiana territory. LSU fans already bought the tickets. But Clemson fought in that game. They fought hard. They competed with with with, uh, with LSU. At one point, they had a 10-point lead over LSU. And we were saying, damn, no matter who Dabble Sweeney and, or no, no matter who he plays against, no matter what type of talent disparity is between, you know, is between Clemson and the, and the other opposition, I mean, just... Clemson just continues to just win. They just they contend, they just they find a way to figure out. They don't have top uh, recruiting classes. They but they just they somehow some way no matter who's gone, they just find a way to get through it. But then LSU comes back. Joe Burrow on that offense starts to really get going. The defense with all that talent that LSU has with Derek Stingley leading the charge with Grant Delpit back there, Christian Fulton out there making plays, Patrick Queen out there, a speed demon that he is making plays, uh, Ch- uh, Chasson making plays, Rashard Lawrence is doing his thing. You really saw the, the game slip away from Clemson in the second half. You saw the game slip away from them in that third quarter. LSU came back once they get once once they they had their foot on the pedal, they just continued to do their thing, and Clemson had no answer. Trevor Lawrence arguably had his worst game of the of his probably his career, maybe since maybe going all the way back to his middle school days. Um, T. Higgins was hurt. He came back and fought through it. You just saw the Clemson team for the first time. You saw the team start to really go downhill. You start to see the team just you just knew that the game was over. You know, LSU was just doing their thing. Clemson is trying to fight, but they just couldn't get it. They just couldn't get it done. LSU walks away as a national champion, while Clemson, a team that was fighting for that three-piece to officially be claimed a dynasty, it's on hold. Clemson had a very, very great season. Yeah, a very, very good season. Very, very good. There's no becoming the first team going all the way back to maybe the early 1900s to go back-to-back 15-0 and seasons that is, the, Clemson was that close to doing it. They were that close to achieving it. But they just couldn't get it done at the end. But if you look at the upside going into 2020, you're talking about a Clemson team that has a lot of recruiting, a lot of, well, we'll say recruiting. Um, I was going to say a lot of talent, but hey, you look at the talent that they have, especially for, for the recruiting class, number three recruiting class in the country, the best that Clemson's ever had. At one point, they were at number one for a very, very long time. But they fell to number three. They couldn't beat out Georgia and Alabama. But who cares? You got a top three recruiting class. Arguably the best defensive line class maybe of all time. Getting three five-star defensive defensive tackles? It's crazy. You get the number one overall player in Brian, in Brian um, Brees. 
Miles Murphy. You get your quarterback in the future in DJ. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm just gonna call him DJ because I already know I'm gonna ruin the last name. But DJ U, I'm gonna call him DJ U, who, who, who looks like the next reincarnation of Ben Roethlisberger, who competed against Bryce Young when he was at Bryce Young, and we all know what DJ man, the talent that this team has, man, with Davis there, um, another five star cornerback. EJ Williams, you steal another top receiver from Alabama. The next, the last guy was Justin Ross. You steal another one. Clemson is loaded when it comes to the recruiting class. And then if you look at the talent that they bring back from last year, you look at the defensive side of the ball, guys like Justin Foster and Tyler Davis and 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 and, and Skelsky, Nolan Turner, they they have a lot of depth. Miles Pickney. These guys have a lot of depth on the defensive side of the ball. The offensive side of the ball, Trevor Lawrence, the generational prospect, is coming back. Future number one overall pick, Travis Etienne. That was a shock. Travis Etienne coming back. Um, Justin Ross is coming back. They got a lot of playmakers. Amari Rogers, a lot of playmakers for Clemson coming back. Now, of course, there is some concern. You guys are missing your offensive line. Four out of the five guys are gone. Jackson Carmen is back, which is great because he was one of your best, um, because he plays at that left tackle position. He's he's arguably argue the best lineman that they had but losing four out of the five guys that's 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 not going to be easy that's not going to be easy at all but the one thing I can say about Clemson even with all the deficiencies that they're missing um is that they're in the ACC and they don't play North Carolina right they got Notre Dame but that's not until late in the season South Carolina is not going to be a a threat we could be talking about a Clemson team that yes will look that will probably struggle but will still blow out everybody they play against. Clemson does this every year where they struggle. They really, really struggle hard, but they find a way to win and they find a way to still blow up the competition. And once they actually do face adversity and they escape it, they become a much better football team. And what do we see every year? This team competing for championships when they do hit that, when they do hit that adversity. So Clemson, in my opinion, as far as I'm looking at it right now, they're looking like they're a team that could not only make it to the college ball playoffs, but go right back to that national championship stage. They got everything they need. The offensive line, I think that, again, I think it can be replaced. It may take some time for that offensive line to gel, but Clemson has lost a lot over the last five, six years, and they've still continued to be at this level, and they're only getting better. The talent is only getting better, which is actually kind of scary because this team is working with top 25, top 20, barely top 15, right? On a good day, they can get a top 10 recruiting class. Now these guys are in the top five, top three in the country, getting the best talent. Clemson is looking like a team that, they're looking like, it's a program that's getting better. Not just as not just as far as their competition, not as far as the coaching, but the talent level is getting better than it's ever been in the in the history of that program. And that is a very, very scary thought. Clemson is getting better. And you know, hopefully the ACC can keep up. Because we all had a problem with Alabama dominating the SEC for so long. At least the SEC had top ten, top five recruiting classes. The ACC is actually going down as far as the as far as the talent. The only team that's competing at a top that's competing at a national top ten, top five level is Clemson. A team, a program that's already dominating the ACC. It's a scary thought, man. But anyway, guys, that's all I got for this Clemson recap video of the 2019 season. If you guys like this video, hit the like button, share the video, and subscribe. It really helps the channel. Um, especially if you guys want more college football recaps. But man, Clemson is looking f freakish. <laughs> it's, it's, it's actually kind of hard to describe. Clemson is looking very scary going into 2020 and beyond.